This is how my NAN workflow helped this channel reach 10,000 subscribers and nearly 400,000 views in less than a month. I've always searched for this type of content, where smaller channels share their journey, because the struggles of a bigger channel are definitely not the same as a channel with close to zero subscribers. And while searching for this, I found out about the outlier indicator. It shows how a video compares to the rest of a channel's average views. It is a great metric to understand what topic has such a high demand and low offer that made YouTube drive its traffic over to the newer channel of less authority. But no, this is not a secret. A lot of YouTubers already talked about this. So don't expect this alone to be what makes your channel blow up. There's still consistency, packaging, storytelling, hooks, and much more. The good news is that these requirements are not binary. You can have a bit of each and improve as you go, but just start. This specific workflow helped me find DeepSeek one week before the actual trend. But even though the first video I made about DeepSeek got me more views than I had before, it was still missing a lot. So four days later, I improved and posted a video that today has nearly 250,000 views. As I said, fetching for outliers isn't new. We have that inside of vidIQ, and this video is not being sponsored by either vidIQ nor ViewStats Pro. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys that you can find this in other platforms. This is all for free. But vidIQ's algorithm kind of places me in the middle of any AI related video. And so that's why I don't really use these outliers from vidIQ. The outliers inside of viewstats.com is a paid plan. So I don't even know how that works. I don't know if it has a better algorithm than vidIQ, but unless they let you pick your competitors, I don't think it would work pretty well. I follow a lot of what I consider to be my competitors. So Nate Herc is one of them that he produces awesome content. And despite finding their outlier score, you won't copy their video at all. You have to have your own style. You have to understand that what you're finding is actually the keywords, like the content. That content has a lot of demand. Or maybe the way Nate explains things just makes more sense for his audience. And the way I explain it makes sense for mine. So despite being a competitor of the niche doesn't mean we're against each other. Does that make sense? What I want to show is that with vidIQ's extension, you can go over to any channel and see this score right here. This is the outlier score. So for this specific video, he reached 229,000 views. This was way more than what he averages in the other videos. Like just scrolling down, you'll see that we get a blue marker for the outlier score here. There's also a purple marker for like the second best performing videos. You can do that with every single channel. So going over to Cole Medin, it's also a really great channel. Uh, you just wait for a second and that's all loaded. So 14X for this video, uh, 5.5 on this one. Now, here's the thing about larger channels like Mount Wolf. He's almost at 1 million subscribers. And at that point, you won't see a lot of outliers just because he, his videos have an, a pretty solid average view. So yeah, you can either go channel by channel uh, looking at each one of your competitors every single day or each two days to find ideas of, of topics and keywords that you should use for your videos. But just in case you don't want to do that every single time and you want to get all the outlier videos from all of your competitors all at once, then just run this simple workflow. And no, I'm not trying to sell you this workflow. It's completely free. If you want help configuring it for your specific case and your machine, head over to AI Builders Forge. It is a new community that I built yesterday. Haven't really announced it, but one of the ideas of this community is to help you integrate your own Python scripts or your NAN workflows to your specific needs. So later today, I'll make a post about this specific video. Feel free to comment below the post to get help on setting it up in your own machine. Now back to the workflow, what we have in this complete section is just grabbing the videos from our competitors. You place the competitors in here. So in the first object, we have Cole Medin and then Nate Herc down here. It's going to loop through these channels and grab all the past, like I think, I believe it's configured to 30. Yeah, so all the videos like from three months ago till now, it's going to grab them. And you will only get three months back the first time you execute it because this is saved to your database. And then for the next times that you run this workflow, it will understand which was the last published time of the video that's already in the database and will fetch from there onwards. So this way you won't waste your Google API tokens. It goes on to removing the shorts from your list of videos. And if the list is empty, then you just continue on the loop. If it's not empty, then you have some videos that should be placed inside of the database. So moving on, it just places that video inside of the database. And how it does that is by actually creating the query instead of just inserting everything inside of this specific node. For me, it just worked better than the conventional way of inserting things inside of Postgres. So enough talking, let's test this out. If I hit this, you'll see that we don't get any output because there's nothing inside of the database. If I hit test workflow, what it should do is go 
through each of the competitors uh, videos. So there's just two competitors. They got all the videos placed inside of the Postgres database. If I run this, these are all the videos from Nate and from Cole. So now what I want to run is this workflow up here. These two videos are the outliers. You'll see that we get the 229,000 views video from Nate Herc. Uh, then moving on to this video, let's see which when you access his channel, you'll see it down here. But then you might be asking, well, why didn't it inform me of this one down here? It is because of the calculation I'm doing inside of this node right here, which only considers two weeks old videos because that way we actually get something that's uh, currently trending. With more competitors, you might get the outliers all listed down here. And you can even send this over to your sheets or make this be some kind of regular task. Hook this up with an AI agent that understands when this is trending and then send you in a WhatsApp message every time that it finds something trending. Actually, I'm, I'm just talking about this and I, I, that's, a, that's a nice idea. That's an idea that we can improve for a future video or just inside of the community. Let me know if that sounds interesting. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video at all and consider subscribing if you are actually someone that wants to build anything inside of NAN automation, especially when it's related to AI. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.